Welcome back to Choice Classic Radio. This weekend, we're going to pause X-1 and Dark Fantasy, and we're going to bring you the three episodes of Beyond Tomorrow, a sci-fi drama that premiered on CBS in the spring of 1950. We hope you enjoy. Now for tonight's story, let's go Beyond Tomorrow. Beyond tomorrow, next month, next decade, next century, when we will still be housewives and farmers and merchants, when some of us will be broke and some of us will be ambitious, and some of us will be lonely as people are today, but when we will employ robots to do our housework and go for a weekend to the moon. Beyond Tomorrow, science fiction stories about us and our children in the days that are soon to come. Tonight, based on a famous story by Robert Heinlein and adapted by Robert Senadella, the story of a man who lived for a dream. All right, everybody, all right. Right this way to... Rocket. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, this machine is the very same type of machine used by the first men to reach the moon. You can step inside and take a look for only 25 cents, but you've got to hurry, 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 because the captain's going to take off for the stratosphere in about five minutes. Come on, see the rocket that made a flight to the moon. Hurry, hurry, hurry. What are you looking at, Sonny? That rocket. What'd you think? You like rockets? I'm going to be a rocket pilot someday. I'm going to be a pilot on the moon run. Ever been inside one? No. Well, I'll take you inside this one if you can tell me what company operates the moon run. Oh, everybody knows that. The Harrison Moon Rocket Company, of course. Right. Come on. Oh, gee whiz. Okay, right uh, up the gangplank. Two there. tickets, please. Okay, sir. Who else wants to see the inside of the rocket that made a flight to the moon? Hurry, hurry, hurry. Here we are, Sonny. Well, what do you think of it? Gee, look at that instrument board. Uh, You see this semicircle of dials? Well, this dial tells you the velocity. And here's one for the air density inside the ship, and... Uh, I know, I know. And this one's for the air density outside the ship. And this one measures the gravitational pull. <laughs> I guess we're just a couple of fans, eh, Sonny? Say, mister, you ever been to the moon? No. No, I haven't. Sorry, sir. Uh, yes, Captain? You and the boy will have to leave now. We've got to cast loose for the flight. Oh, gee. Oh, you, you run along, Sonny. I want to talk to the captain. Well, okay. So long. And thanks, mister. Uh, good luck to you, my boy. Uh, <clears throat> Captain. Yeah? How far up do you go on this flight? Not far, just about a thousand miles. You do it twice a day. Crowd likes it. We're out of sight in four and three tenths seconds. How they go for that takeoff? Ever take passengers? Got 25 bucks? Yes. We take passengers. Good. I'll uh, have the doc come in and give you a check out. Uh, oh, no. What's the matter? Uh, well... Nothing, nothing. Uh, if you're in a hurry, I thought that maybe we could dispense. Not a chance. Want me to lose my license? Hey, Doc. Yeah? Uh, Doc, come in here a minute. Be right there. Well, all right. Standard procedure. It'll be over in a jiffy. Take off your jacket. All right. Do you want me, Mac? Gentleman here wants to take the flight. All right, sir. Roll up your sleeves, please. There you are. All right. Let's test your blood pressure. Uh-huh. How old are you, sir? Sixty. You don't mean seventy. Sixty? All right. But it's no go anyway. You mean you won't take me? I couldn't even guarantee that you'd live through the takeoff. You see, sir, it's not only that your blood pressure is high. I bet you have a heart condition, too. But at your age... I'm 60. Well, let's say 60. Even at 60, bones are brittle, highly calcified, easily broken in the shock of takeoff. 
Rocketry, sir, is it's a, a young, young man's, man's game. game. I know. Sorry, sir. I'd like to take you. But... Oh well, it's 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 all right. I rather expected it. But, uh, <clears throat> Captain, could you and your uh, engineer have dinner with me at the fairgrounds restaurant after your flight? Well, we'll be hungry. Good. I'd be waiting for you. Hiya, mister. Huh? Oh, hello, Sonny. Gee, you stayed in there so long, I thought she was gone with him. No. Not this time, Sonny. More coffee, Captain McIntyre? Thank you. Uh, smoke a cigar, Mr. Cummings? Don't mind if I do. Oh, here you are. Boy, a corona, corona. Mm-hmm. Well, then. So you, uh, you quit the moon run, Captain. Why? I, uh, didn't like it. Oh, I can't believe that. You're a rocket man. Tell them the truth, Mac. It was Rule G that got you. Oh, Rule G, eh? You still drink? No, but they don't give you a second chance. Uh, how about you, Mr. Cummings? How is it you're not on the moon run anymore? Oh, I smuggled a beautiful blue rock back to Earth for a girl I know. Boy, I wish I hadn't. I could be in Luna City tonight. Ha. Now, there's a town. Uh, how about you, Captain? Would you like to be back in Luna City? Why are you asking us all this, Mr. Harrison? No, oh, I've got my reasons. Did you like it on the moon? <laughs> the moon's the only place for a young fellow, Mr. Harrison. It's still undeveloped compared with what it's going to be. It's just opening up. It's the frontier all over again. I uh, might be able to get you boys back there. What? What do you mean? Look, I want to get to the moon myself. And frankly, I need a couple of boys like you to take me. Fellas who know the ropes. Well, what's the matter with getting an excursion permit and going in a company ship? He can't pass a physical exam, Charlie. Well, I know, but if you can afford to hire us, Mr. Harrison, why don't you just bribe a company doctor? It's been done before. No, no, it won't work for me. I'm a little too prominent. Say, you're not... My name is Delos D. Harrison. You're D.D. Harrison himself. I thought so. Well, gosh, sir, you... You own most of the company yourself. You, you, you ought to be able to do anything you like, rules or no rules. No, no, that's not true. I'm a good deal less free than you are. What? But holy... Well, I, I tried to do what you suggest, but the other directors wouldn't permit it. They're, they're afraid of losing their franchise. You've never been to the moon? No. Say, this is really tough. Why, if it hadn't been for you, none of us had ever got there. And you can't go. Not legally. But if I find a ship, are you boys game to take me? Sure we are. Now, wait a minute. I think we better have more details. All right, fair enough. Now, you'll have to buy the ship for me. If I did it openly, everybody would figure out what I meant to do and stop me. Yeah, that's right. I'll supply you with all the cash you need. You go out and locate some sort of ship that can be refitted for the trip. Look, Mr. Harrison, why do you want to go to the moon so badly? Well, I don't know whether I can explain it to you or not. It's the one thing I've wanted to do all my life. When I was a kid, practically nobody believed that men would ever reach the moon. They laughed at the idea. But I believed. I read Verne and Wells and Smith, and I set my heart on being one of the men to walk the surface of the moon, to see her other side, and to look back on the face of the earth hanging in the sky. Captain McIntyre, Mr. Cummings... I've lived longer than I should. But I don't want to die until I've set foot on the moon. You get hold of that money, Mr. Harrison. We'll take you to the moon. But, Mr. Harrison... You heard me, Belden. Sell them. I want every share of stock I own realized in cash as rapidly as possible. Spaceways, Spaceways Provisioning Company, Artemis Mines, Lunar City Recreations, the whole lot of them. Sell them all. Hello. Jason, this is Belden. Oh, hello, 
job, Alan. I'm calling you because your uncle gave me a rather peculiar order today. Really? What was it? Well, now I work for your uncle, Jason. I, I shouldn't be calling you. It's just that I hate to see your inheritance endangered. What? Say, what's going on? Well, now, I, I'm supposed to tell you. I, I wouldn't want you to forget me in case... Well, I understand uh... you perfectly, Belden. You'll be taken care of. What's the old man doing? He's ordered me to sell all his stock. He's converting everything into cash. Belden, I... I won't forget this. Thank you. I'll see my lawyer right away. And so, Your Honor, we contend that Mr. Harrison's conduct gives clear indication that a mind once brilliant has become senile. We therefore pray this honorable court to declare Mr. Harrison incompetent and to assign a conservator to protect his financial interests and the financial interests of his heir, Mr. Jason Harrison. That is all. Has Mr. Dulles Harrison's attorney any closing argument? Only this, Your Honor. My client has the right to enjoy his wealth in whatever manner best suits him for the few remaining years of his life. We pray that this court will confirm our opinion that my client has this right. I thank you. Mr. Cummins, this court has as high a regard for individual liberty as you have. But it must be admitted that in selling his holdings and demanding cash, Mr. Dallas Harrison has acted in an eccentric manner. The court cannot overlook the fact that men do grow old. Yes, men do become senile. And in such cases must be protected. I shall take this matter under advisement until tomorrow. Court is adjourned. <laughs> Disappears, D.D. Harrison, missing, Oh, it's awful, Jason, but I couldn't have foreseen it. I don't suppose so, Belton. He must have gone to court yesterday with that money in his pocket. When he saw that the judge would decide against him, he decided not to stick around for the verdict. He took everything? Everything. We've got to find him. Well, the police are working on him. Well, you've got to help them. How? Well, figure out where he went. Well, I don't know where he went. You're the only one who can find out. Go through his papers, look for clues, well, look for hiding places, examine everything. Letters, bills, scratch pads, diaries, everything. Find a clue, report to me. It's up to you to dig up the leads, Belton. We've got to find that old man before he spends all my money. Hey, this ham gravy's good. Charlie, you'd rather eat than anything, Mr. Harrison. Mm, that's a libel on the girls in Nona City, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a pretty good appetite myself since I joined you boys. Desert air. Exercise. No, no. I don't think a man's health depends so much on what he does as on whether he wants to do it. I feel good because I'm doing what I want to do. That's all a man can ask of life. Say, Mr. Harrison. Yes? How does a guy go about getting rich? Like you did. Oh, I don't know, Charlie. I never tried to get rich. I never wanted to be rich or well-known or anything like that. Ah, you wouldn't kid me, would you? No, no, no. I just wanted to live a long time and see it all happen. Oh, I wasn't unusual. There were lots of boys like me. Radio hams there were and telescope builders and airplane amateurs. We had science clubs and basement laboratories and science fiction leagues. No, I didn't want to be rich. I just wanted to live long enough to see men rise up to the stars. And if God was good to me, to go as far as the moon myself. It's been a good life. I haven't any complaint. There's the moon up there. Look at it. The moon. We'll be there in a day or two. See, Mac. Yeah? As far as you're concerned, you're ready to go now, is that right? That's right. Well, then, we're just waiting for your calibration runs and pre-flight tests, eh, Charlie? Well, say, I uh, might run them tonight. Now, that's what I was getting at, can you? Well, sure, why not? If Mac will help, eh? I'll help you. We'll all help. With luck, we can take off tomorrow. Come on, boys, let's go. Let's get that. Let's... Oh, I'll catch uh, him, Mac. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Harrison, he's out. Come on, Charlie. Let's get him into his tent. Right. Yeah. Easy now. Easy does it. Ah. Uh, uh, there. 
Where's his medicine? In his vest pocket. All right, better. Break that capsule. Hold it under his nose. Right. He's breathing better. We won't go tomorrow. We've got to wait until he's back to normal. Look, uh, can we leave him for a sec, Mac? I think so. Come outside for a minute, then. Okay. What is it? Mac, we're not going through with this. Why not? It's murder. He'll never stand up under the initial acceleration. The takeoff will kill him. It's what he wants to do. Oh, we can't let him. Why not? Why not? Because he's such a swell old duck, Mac. Okay, what do you want to do with him? Send him back? Let the court put him away in a bug house? Let him dress in a bathrobe and sit in a wheelchair in a sanitarium till he dies of a broken heart? No, no, I don't want that. Okay, get out to the hangar and make your setup for those test runs. I'll be along. Hello. Jason, Melvin speaking. I've got something. Yes, what is it? He had it in a strong box. It's a deed. A deed to a piece of land in Arizona, six acres. Apparently, from the description, this is desert land. When did he buy it? He didn't. The two men named James McIntyre and Charles Cummings bought it a month ago. It looks as if what he did... I had... know what it looks as if. Good work, Felton. Now get out there right away and stop him. Stop him at all costs. <laughs> In 20 seconds, we will return you to Robert Heinlein's famous science fiction story, Requiem. A few words first concerning speed. In the era of rocket travel ahead, speed will be an important factor. But speed today can be the direct cause of sudden death on the nation's highways. As spring dissolves into summer, more and more people will be driving towards vacation lands, taking the family for a Sunday spin. And more and more necessary will be the element of caution. Don't speed. Remember that accidents don't always happen to someone else. By speeding, they can happen to you. And now, back to our story. Hey there! Hello, stranger. Looking for something? Looking for somebody. Who? Are you, uh... James McIntyre. What about it? Hey, what's up, Mac? Now, come here, Charlie. What's the matter? He'd be Charles Cummings, I guess. So? You have a spaceship here, and you're taking D.D. Harrison on a flight to the moon. We haven't got a spaceship. What are you keeping that big shed? Strata yacht. Where's Mr. Harrison? Harrison? Do uh-huh. you know anybody named Harrison, Charlie? It's no use, Mac. We can't take off now. They know he's here. He talk good sense, fella. Where's Harrison? See that little tent over there? Where? There, right in back of you. Oh, well, that one. Is he in there? Yeah. I... Catch him, Mac. Nice going, Charlie. I hated so. It was the only way. Let's leave him here. Oh, darn it. That's the finger I broke playing shortstop. I'm always hurting that finger. Come on. We haven't any time. Get Pop into the cabin. Strap him into his hammock. Right. Can you tie up this guy? In a jiffy. Lona City. Here we come. <laughs> How was it, Mac? I'm all set. How's Mr. Harrison? Mac, I don't think he'll live through the takeoff. It's what he wants. I know. You better stay with him. Right. Okay, Mr. Harrison. Okay. We're ready to take off. Let let me go over to the port. I I want to watch the earth. No, you, you've got to stay in the hammock. All set? All set. Okay, Mac. Here we go. Mr. Harrison. I, I'm, I'm all right, Charlie. Oh. I'm going up forward and see Mac. Going all right, Mac? Going all right. Is he? Yeah, he's alive. But he's in bad shape, Mac. How bad? A couple of cracked ribs, anyhow. I don't know what else. 
I don't know whether he'll last out the trip, Mac. His heart was pounding something awful. He'll last, Charlie. He's tough. Tough? He's delicate as a canary. I don't mean that. He's tough way down inside. Yeah. I better stay with him. We're on our way, Mr. Harrison. Can't I... Can't I move to a port now? Can't I watch the Earth now? Oh, nothing to see yet. The blast hides it until we build up enough speed to coast up to the changeover point. Maybe if you're all right then, we'll, we'll move you to a port, but only if you're all right. Because you see... Oh, oh. Mr. Harrison. Mr. Harrison. Mr. Harrison. Dad. Dad, look. Look, Dad, look. Take it easy, Mr. Harrison. Dad, look. Up in the sky. What's that up in the sky, Dad? That's Holly's Comet, Dallas. Where, where did it come from? Oh, I don't know, son. Way out in the sky somewhere. It's beautiful, Dad. It's beautiful. I want to touch it. I'm afraid you'll never be able to touch it, son. I want to touch it. I want to touch that beautiful thing up there in the sky. Take it easy, Mr. Harrison. Take it easy. Dallas? Dallas, will you stop puttering with that machine and listen to me? Oh, hello, Charlotte. I didn't know you were there. I know you didn't. You never know I'm here. All you do is tinker and putter and work over that laboratory bench. I'd like to have it ripped out. But didn't I show you in the paper, Charlotte? They've made a flight into the stratosphere. We haven't been to the movies for six months. Well, if they can reach the stratosphere, they can reach the moon. That's what I'm working on, Charlotte. It's big. It's important. You never listen. I'm warning you, Dallas. You've got to choose between me and this laboratory. Choose between you and the laboratory? Choose? But don't you see, I'm going to make a machine that will reach the moon. Mr. Harrison, please, try to be quiet. Try to lie still there. We'll be at the changeover point soon. She, she left me, Charlie. She left me. Take it easy, Mr. Harrison. It, it works. It works. I know this time the machine will work. I know this machine will reach the moon. I'm going to take off next month. No, you're not, Mr. Harrison. What do you mean, Doctor? My own machine, and I can't take it to the moon. You'll have to get somebody else to take it to the moon, Mr. Harrison. But, but this is my own machine. I want to take it to the moon. I want to touch the moon. Mr. Harrison, we know enough about rocket ships to know that a man of your age with your weakened constitution cannot travel in them. You get somebody else to fly your ship to the moon. You stay on Earth. But I, I've got to go. I've got to go. I've got to go. Mr. Harrison, please. We've passed the changeover point. I've got to go. I've got to go to the moon. Oh, take it easy, Mr. Harrison. I'm going up front with Mac. Mac, I'm worried. How is he? Delirious. He keeps raving. I'm worried about the landing. You better set her down awful easy. All right, I will. I'll ease her in on an involute approach curve. All right, go ahead. Here we go. Charlie. He's out. Mr. Harrison. Well, he's breathing anyway. Let's get him out of the ship, Charlie. Okay. You get the compressed air tanks out. I can handle them. He only weighs about 20 pounds a little weight. Right. All right, Mr. Harrison. Here we go. You wanted to get to the moon? Let me get those buckles unstrapped. There we are. Okay. Hey, Mac, get the door open, will you? Right. Get this compressed air tank out. Okay, come on, Charlie. Bring him out. Right. You better set him down here on the ground. Right. Yeah. Uh, where am I? Is this the moon? This is the moon, Mr. Harrison. Look. Look in the sky. That, that moon up there, that, that's the earth, isn't it? That's the earth, Mr. Harrison. I made it. I'm on the moon. I'm looking back at the earth. You made it, Mr. Harrison. Oh, I can die now. Got a pencil. Here's a pencil. Paper? Paper, Mac. Well, I haven't got paper. That, 
That shipping tag. That shipping tag on the compressed air tank. Here it is. I've got to write. Then I can die. I'll hold you up. Go ahead and write. And when you bury me, put this over my grave. We'll carve it in marble, Mr. Harrison. No. No, leave, leave it on the shipping tag. A shipping tag from a compressed air tank. That's what I want over my grave. Write it, Mr. Harrison. Under the wide and starry sky, dig my grave and let me lie. Glad did I live and gladly die. And I lay me down with a will. This be the verse you grave for me. Here he lies, where he longed to be. Home is the sailor, home from the sea, and the hunter, home from the hill. just heard the first in a new series of science fiction stories, Beyond Tomorrow. In tonight's presentation, Requiem, Everett Sloan was featured in the role of D.D. D. Harrison. Music was composed and conducted by Henry Silverin, and John Campbell, Jr. was our program consultant. Beyond Tomorrow is produced and directed by Mitchell Grayson. Listen again at the same time next week when CBS will bring you another story about you in the future. You, Beyond Tomorrow. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.